Hello and welcome to chapter 55. Chapter 55 is going to be about ecosystems. So just to give you an idea of what that will entail, if you think about a couple chapters ago we talked about populations. Populations were a subgroup of a species, right? And then we talked about species. Then we went into community ecology and a community was a bunch of populations living together. Now we're going to ecosystems, which is a whole bunch of communities together. So you can see that we're zooming further and further out, getting more broad. So an ecosystem is going to be all the organisms living in that community and then all of the abiotic factors they're going to interact with. So when we look at an ecosystem or the field of ecology, there's two things that you're really going to be concerned about. How energy flows through it and then how chemicals are going to cycle through it. Those are the two really important parts of it. Okay, so um, when we are going to look at an ecosystem and how it's functioning, what we're going to do is designate what are called trophic levels for all of these different organisms. So we've got primary producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and quaternary consumers. So the primary producers are going to be the ones that are harvesting some type of energy and converting it into a form that other organisms can eat. Most of the time that's going to be photosynthesis, right? So anything photosynthetic is going to be a primary producer. So plants, plankton, certain types of bacteria, certain types of protists, those are going to be examples of that. But majority of the time it's going to be plants. So those are going to be our primary producers and what we also call them are going to be autotrophs. Autotrophs mean that they make their, woohoo, I went nuts with the arrow there. Um, autotrophs mean that they make their own energy. Heterotrophs are going to be anything that cannot make their own energy. So it's going to be anything above those primary producers. So let's look at our little map here. We've got our primary consumers here. And primary consumers are going to, basically everything up here is going to be a heterotroph, but primary consumers are going to be herbivores, herbivores that eat the producers, okay? Then we've got secondary consumers, and those are going to be carnivores that eat the herbivores, and then, and so on and so on, you can kind of see how it goes. So my question is, where do you think humans fit in on this? Usually, people will say that humans are going to be quaternary consumers. Is that true? Sure, of course we are. However, I have some very good friends that are primary consumers. What does that mean? That means I've got some friends who are vegetarians, right? They're only eating plants, so they're primary consumers. So we can fit in in all of these things. And that's something I want you to remember because primary consumers, it's really easy to think of them as these little herbivores like a grasshopper. But if you think about a cow, a cow is technically a primary consumer too. It's eating grass. So um, they don't always look exactly how you think. So that's the food chain levels. Now one group that's not shown in that picture are going to be what are called detritivores. And they feed on what's called detritus. Detritus is going to be like poop and decaying organisms and dead stuff. And they're super important because they're that link back to the top of the food, or from the top of the food chain back around. So detritivores or decomposers, super, super important part because that's what actually allows it to cycle back around. So um, they would be kind of down here and we would have like a circle kind of going around to show them in that picture. All right, so a couple of things about detritivores. First of all, they are going to be that major link between the primary producers and those top consumers, right? So when they die, they're going to get recycled and the plants are going to take them back up. So that's one important role they play. Um, the other thing is that they're going to get rid of all of that dead stuff, right? We would like that to happen. And the majority of these guys are going to be fungus and prokaryotes, maybe some worms, and even a vulture would be considered to be a decomposer, right? So those are all going to fit into that category, which is super important, but for some reason, no food chains ever show them. All right. Now, I remember when I was going to college and I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist, and I was so excited. I was so excited because I went to University of Iowa for a year, and let's just say that didn't... Uh, that wasn't my cup of tea. I know, it's crazy. So I said, I want to be a marine biologist. I'm moving down to Florida. This is going to be so cool. And I got the stuff in the mail to pick my classes. And I was like, oh, what am I going to pick? Is it going to be like dolphin training and, you know, fish identification? Yeah, not so much. Um, let's see. My first year was 
calculus one, physics one, organic chemistry one, and then all of those in the second semester I took the two. Um, so yeah, physics, chemistry, calculus, oh, and then I got to take a botany class. Not was that what I was expecting, right? And um, I was extremely angry. And physics and calculus and chemistry are very tough classes. However, I'm glad I got through them because I actually used them later. It's scary. You do use some of that stuff later. And um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because all of those laws of physics that you learn, and physics, you know, some of the stuff you learn is about waves and how waves travel. Well, that's how light travels. And we have to understand how photons of light are getting into an ecosystem so we know what the energy budget is for that ecosystem. Chemistry, same thing. When we've got chemicals that are cycling through an ecosystem, we have to understand how they're going to react with other things and how they're going to eventually come back. So it's really important to understand the laws of physics and chemistry. However, if you would have told me that that first year, I was a little upset. Anyway, all right. So let's talk about primary production in this next section. Um, so primary production, if you remember, is going to be the amount of energy that's actually being harvested from the sun. So we'll get into that in the next video.